Hello, hello, Steph here, and I have another little quick project. Now that summer's nearly over, it's a little bit late, but um, in June at Soul Flags, I did a whole ton of garden stakes, and the class was ridiculously popular. Well, my cousin, Sierra, who's been bitten by the glass bug, came up with a fantastic idea for doing garden stakes, and I'm gonna show you one that's broken, unfortunately. Uh, but how cute are these tomatoes? Bit of stringer, bit of dots, little bit of nipped uh, pieces of glass, and voila, a garden stake. So today, I'm gonna lay one out so you can follow along and do this. Now you can do this in 90, 96. Um, all you need is some stringer. This is from Tabitha, but Tabitha, uh, well, not but, Tabitha sells 90 and 96, but if you don't want to wait for Tabitha's, you can go on Etsy and look for Stringer, and there's plenty of folks selling Vitrograph Stringer. So you can find Vitrograph Stringer. You need a piece of base glass. I'm using 3mm because this was 2mm, and I think it was just a bit too thin. Uh, this is 6 inches by 1.75, and standard 3mm Tecta. And then I have here... A whole passel of red dots that my cousin thankfully and sweetly cut up for me and fused. So I have my pick of red dots. And then this is something I used a frit piston and made. Although you could just mosaic nipper, uh, put it in a baggie, smack with a hammer. Uh, it's a mix of greens. It's some um, adventuring green, some adventuring green and yellow special production I had, a little bit of spring green, and some citronelle. And like I said, I used an Aranko Frit Piston, which I don't love, but works pretty well. Um, I can link it down below. I'm not an Amazon associate, so you might go find someone who is. And go buy from them. They will get they don't get much in the way of commission. It's like 3%, but you could give back to uh, someone that you like on YouTube. Another option you could use is this is Bullseye's Mint Opal Adventuring Green Two Color Mix in Medium. Let me pour some out for you. This works really, really well, uh, depending on the color of your uh, stringer. My stringer from Tabitha appears to be a mix of what looks like either citronelle or spring green and what appears to be a light adventuring. So as a result, I'll pour it again. The two colors don't really mesh. I've got it off screen. The two colors don't mesh as well as I would like. So I'm not gonna use it. I made my own little blend. And it blends in pretty well. So the process is pretty simple. I'm gonna use, well, let's start digging. This piece looks good. It's a little bit thick on one end, but I found I kinda like that. But let's see, what else do we have? And I didn't grab all of mine, I just grabbed four or five pieces to see what I had. This one's a bit wide, that won't work. There is this guy, gal, thing, class have a gender. About, kinda like it aiming this way. That's pretty, well. No, I like the darker stride better. So I'm gonna take some glass tack gel. You can use whatever glue you like. I just happen to use glass tack by the multitudes, gallons. Take your pick. And I'm just gonna glue it in a couple of spots so it hangs out nice and tight. I like that. So what I'm gonna do is my little bunching of tomatoes. Now, I like how she did these in threes. Um, like everybody says, the eye is drawn to threes. Kind of like that wonky shape right there. So that's gonna be my one of mine. Let's put it with the uh, shiny side up. And then I'm gonna dig through this over here. I got one opal. So I'm gonna look through, I've got standard red, and I think this is either dark red well, this is a piece that looks to be like it was special production, but I have a darker red in here that is either the standard dark red or is um, some cane I got 
that was a second a curious from Bullseye. There's a couple of cool swirly ones that I'm going to try and use. See, this is a darker red, so let's try and scooch some of that and stuff it up here. I like that. Then I'm going to go with this little guy. Get some more of that gel. I put it in a spot I ended up not using right there, and I like that. I am going to clean up some of the gel. Ordinarily, I wouldn't bother, but for what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to take this, pull it closer to me so I can see, and then I'm going to dab just a tiny amount of gel on the top of each of these tomatoes. Just a touch. And then since this piece is too wide, like that, don't fly. It's moving around a bit, but I'm going to spread so I can put my tomato tops on. And then I'll twist this so you can see it. Here's my mixture. I didn't frit sift this, and I probably should have, but in the cleaning of my garage, I'm not real sure where my frit sifters went. So I've got a lot of powder, but if you shake a little, the bigger pieces come to the top. What I'm looking for is more of a, a fine medium sort of consistency, so I shake a little of the fine out, and then I just sort of dust. I got enough there, pieces will stick. And since it's only in a few places, see, some pieces stuck because there's glass tack gel there. So that's what handy dandy tweezers are for. And I can peel a few of these loose. I mean, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit left. Tomatoes do have green bits everywhere. But now I've got a bit of green on top of the tomatoes, kind of running loose. It looks like the tops of tomatoes. Yeah, don't use your fingers to brush fruit aside, but when do I ever listen to myself? So I've got a few other pieces of little bits of fruit here, or not fruit, stringer. And I think these tomatoes look lonely. So let's give them friends in the form of another branch of tomatoes here. This one will lay under real nicely, which is handy. I'm just gonna put, I got tweezers in my mouth, don't mind the mumbles. Put a bit of glue under and slide. I'm gonna learn from my fail and actually put some right here and apply it to the dots. That way I don't end up with glass yuck everywhere, or glass tack gel everywhere. And I really like these because they've got a bit of a swirly on the side. See? It's kind of funny, you know. I love yellow pear tomatoes. They're one of my favorite types. But if you made little yellow dots, people wouldn't automatically recognize these as tomatoes. It's kind of like how apples are almost always red, occasionally green. And your grapes are always red or green, you don't usually get... Uh, or purple or green. You don't usually do red grapes or black grapes um, because we're conditioned to assume certain things are certain colors. Uh, so here I am doing red tomatoes even though there are purple tomatoes, black tomatoes, green tomatoes, book fried green tomato, um, and there are uh, my favorite which are little yellow pears. That's kind of a funny shape. I like that. Let's do the funny shaped tomato. I mean, you could argue you could actually do this for berries too if you wanted. So these two are hanging. And they're kind of transparent, so I'm gonna go with one bright red one to hang on on the bottom. There we go. And like before, a bit of glass tack gel. Huh, bubbles. Very carefully. That's a bit goopery, but we'll deal. I can scoop up a little of it. And again, jeans make a wonderful apron. Use the scoop. I chose this set of tweezers specifically because it has the tiny scoop. Usually I use some angled tweezers, but this was the scoop set that really made this a lot easier. Got them off Amazon somewhere. 
If I remember, I will link in the description. All right, again, shake the extra off. I think that looks pretty cute. And I have this one little one left that I'm gonna put down here because I just, it's an itty bitty piece and I can't, it looks lonely. But instead of doing three, I think what I'm gonna do is just one little one. So I'm digging through here to look, see if there's anything interesting. And I don't see anything particularly interesting, so we'll just go with one like this. And there's enough stuff around it. I should just be able to scoop some of the goo. It's kind of dusty. Ah, no. And there we go. Let's clean it real quick. There we go. And a bit more of the frit mixture I made. Stick it on. And I like that. Now I've got these big chunks that I could use for leaves, but I have a pretty good mixture from Tabitha that I've been using. And I actually really like her hollows, which I know not everybody, well, flying camera, not everybody loves the hollows, but I do because I think it's an economical way to get interesting pieces without breaking the bank. So I'm going to use one of those big hollows and a couple of smaller pieces. And I'm going to see if I can arrange these as I keep smacking the camera. I really got to get a better setup and see what I can do. I think here and here I need flat one and maybe a small one up there. So yeah, I really got to get a better setup. So. I think that's good there. And up there. But no, I don't want that there. I'm gonna put one, I'm gonna put one over here because it feels kind of out of balance. Uh, you know, it's a little big. Let's look for a full size one without a hole. There we go. I like that. Well, it's a little thick. A little oddly cut, too. It's sort of a crescent shape. Let's see if I can fix that with a set of tweezers or clippers. And I did. It's thinner now. I like that better. There we go. So I'm real happy with this one. I am gonna do like four more and do five. And I'll come back and show you all five when I'm done and then uh, we'll pop them in the kiln and let them tack these. So give me just a sec to finish the rest and I will show you the finished ones. Okay, so I have them all done. I like each and every one of them. I think this one in the middle is my favorite. Not because all of the tomatoes, which I almost called berries, are the same color. I decided to do one with the same color for fun. But I think I like it because it feels really loaded heavily. Um, it reminds me of my grandfather. I was raised by my grandparents and my grandfather had a thing for tomatoes. One year we had 28 tomato plants. Because our tomatoes would forever get the blight. And so he'd plant tons and tons of tomatoes to make sure we had enough. And the year we had 28 tomato plants, not a single tomato got the blight. We have a big railing, kind of a wraparound porch on the upper level of this house, and the entire railing was lined with paper towels and had tomatoes from one end to the other, and about all we ate for about three weeks was tomatoes. I was in heaven. I love tomatoes. Except at the same time, I was fighting an allergy, and the t doctor was like, well, cut out the tomatoes and see if you're allergic to tomatoes. I was 12, 14, and it was the worst two weeks of my life. All these delicious tomatoes, and I kept being told not to have any. So I'm gonna throw these in on a tack fuse and when they come back out, I will show you how I am gonna glue these garden stakes on and my process for doing that and letting them sit and how long I let them sit and all of that. And I'll also include a link to get the garden stakes, they're really cheap. 
So I'll be right back. Okay, so I have four of the garden stakes here. The fifth one I'll show you in a minute. We can all laugh at it. Um, it fused beautifully, but I'm a dumbass. So they all turned out really nice, and I'm gonna show you how I like to glue them on. First you wanna do is clean your stuff, clean your stakes, make sure they're clean, and that you don't have any residue on the back of the stake for the bottom inch and a half, two inches. Grab yourself some glass and set it up and then flip your garden stake over so the back is exposed. I try to light my glass out in such a way that these two are mostly level. Um, because of the thickness, this is roughly six millimeters, so this being roughly six millimeters is good. There's a slight bump, it's not perfect. This one, it doesn't really matter. Got myself my garden stake, got myself a tube of B7000. I used to have great big tubes, but I don't, I'll pull it down where you can see it. I don't use huge amounts of this stuff. So what I did is I went on Amazon and bought myself a little three pack of them. Do keep an eye on these. They will yellow over time and yellow on a clear garden stake is not very appealing. So keep an eye out. So what I like to do with it, and I'll move it here, a bit more contrast, is I take this, it's got the little, uh, needle tip so it keeps the tip clean and what I will do is I just spread some about an inch down the garden stake. Now I teach at Soul Flags and I often teach kids. Kids love to decorate their garden stakes with everything under the sun so if you've got really heavy garden stakes say you went wild or you've got somebody who did a whole bunch of stuff on their garden stake, go down another half an inch to an inch. I mean, you won't have as much to stick in a pot, but it will save your garden stake from tipping over or breaking off the stake. So how much glue do I put on? Eh, about that much. So 16th of an inch. I don't have quite as much right there, so I'm gonna put just a stab more. I mean, it's a pretty good thick layer. You can obviously see it. You can add more. I was applying it to the stakes themselves, but I found this is a little more efficient. So as you can see, I'm pretty even on both sides. It's not perfect. It's about an inch. As I'm doing it off camera because I'm an idiot. So you can see about how thick it is. About an inch across the top. And so what I just do is I lay it and I leave about this much. So I leave about a quarter inch into the stake and drop carefully. You can see, I'll pull it down, zoom in my camera. You can see how it's spread out. I use a garden stake to point here and here and here where the glass has hit the garden stake. So I press just a touch and let it sprawl out, or sprawl, spread out. And then I go in with this, this happens to be B7000. But you can use glue of your choice. This stuff just works for me. What I do is get something with a fine tip. And I tend to run a little bead around the outside. Sometimes I'll do the inside as well. It depends on how good I'm feeling about the steak. These are fairly light, so I think just the outside is good. And you can see by moving it that the steak is moving with it. So what I'm going to do real quick off camera is cap the glue. Man, I'm getting old. I can't find the hole. So it's capped. And now I'm going to do my final adjusting to make sure it's nice and straight. And I'm gonna leave it. B7000, I'm gonna pull this back so you can see the finished one I have and then laugh at it. Uh, B7000, I let sit for about four hours before I move it. And then I do try and let it cure for 24 to 48 hours before actually using it. Um, but you can, oh hey, now we're gonna get 30 beeps. So I'm gonna pause this and come back. Sorry for having to pause in the middle almost of a sentence, but my Paragon kiln, when it goes off, has 30 beeps, and I don't think anybody wanted to sit through 30 seconds of me talking with a beep in the background. 
I actually taught a garden stakes class today, a private class, and uh, I just finished her garden stakes. So, like I was saying, let it sit for four hours, then you can move them around freely, they won't jiggle. And I ideally let it cure for 24 to 48 hours before stuffing it into the pot or the dirt. I've let this one sit, I glued it at three o'clock, it's about 10 o'clock, so seven hours. And as you can see, it's plenty sturdy, but you wanna laugh at me? Nice and glued on, great. Upside down. Hi Steph, you're a nitwit. To be fair, like I said, I taught a private class, I came home, I threw everything in the kiln, I glued this real quick, and my first thought, or my only thought at the time was feed me. So I hurried and threw everything together and then got my happy ass upstairs and ate lunch. So my dumb butt didn't pay any attention to the fact that I glued it upside down. So in theory, I think I can just squeeze this because B7000 is fairly uh, flexible and it's only cured seven hours and maybe between a set of pliers or tweezers, I think I can run it under well enough that with some work, see, it's peeling up. Catch your mistakes within, you know, the first eight to 12 hours and you'll be fine. Catch them after it's cured 48 hours and I suspect it will be a lot harder because at this point I can just scratch this up, flip this around and glue these and they'll be fine. But you can see what they look like and like I said, seven hours later, I'm waving it around like a baton. So it's reasonably safe. Again, I mean, if you're gluing these for a, if you're doing this as a last minute thing for your craft show the next day, you might warn people to give it 24 to 48 hours before they put them in a plant. But uh, otherwise you should be good to go. As always, thanks for watching and I will catch you next week. Um, I'm not sure what next week's video is gonna be, but we'll have something. Hey, it's Steph, and I appreciate you watching my video. YouTube will recommend another one down below, so if you want to keep watching, just click on it.